So, I have quite a lot of hours in this game. Uh, I have a number of videos up on the, this channel um, of me just kind of messing around in it. But it's it's a free game, and it gets a lot of traffic, a lot of new players um, and returning players, uh, and the game's updated quite often. So I figured uh, what I'd do is make a quick video basically explaining how to get started. This, this video is really aimed at beginners, uh, people who haven't played the game before. But if you're returning, um, you haven't touched it for a while, then maybe this is a good time. I will state now that I am not supported by War Thunder in any way, by Gaijin Entertainment. Um, and I have my gripes with this game. It's not perfect. I'm not promoting it. Uh, this is purely just to help people who are getting started because it does have quite a big learning curve, especially learning how old vehicles um, work. Uh, how all the systems work, so I'm hoping that this is going to help someone, um, if not, well, I don't know, it was kind of fun to make, and the replay system is pretty interesting. What What is it? What is War Thunder? Well, War Thunder is a mass multiplayer online game, um, and it's set around World War II, and kind of later, leading up to like the Korean War, um, and even later, um, as we've seen with recent additions to the game, and it strives to create a... Uh, Realistic historical PvP and PvE in some areas combat experience uh, taking place in either air, ground, or since we released naval forces. Um, the game features like absolutely loads and loads of, of unique vehicles. All have their own stats. They all have their own uh, models, um, damage models, uh, weapon systems, sounds, um, and the player can research these to unlock them and play them. Each vehicle has its own unique stats that have been recreated as faithfully as the game engine allows. So, each of these vehicles, um, as I say, they've been recreated uh, to sort of mirror um, how they how they were throughout history. But obviously, um, the guys in has to guys in the company who make War, War Thunder uh, have to obtain all the statistics for these vehicles. So they're not 100% perfect. Some of them work better than others in the game engine. Um, there is bit of an obvious matter, um, but you don't really need to worry about that until later. Choosing a nation. Um, there's seven different nations in War Thunder. Uh, some were added later, so they have less developed trees. Um, tech trees, I mean. Uh, but select one of them when you first start. Um, you can always come back later and choose a different one if you don't, if you know it that one, the vehicles in it weren't, you, you struggled playing with them, or if you don't really like them, or you're just interested in some of the vehicles in the other ones, because I know I started playing Britain, then went to America, Germany, just because of all these, you know, very well-known, um, iconic vehicles from the war. Despite this, first, I think it's the first win that you get with a specific nation, you will unlock a special premium vehicle, and it's unique to that nation's tech tree, um, and it's bound to your account, so... Uh, you can only unlock the premium vehicle for the nation you get a win in first. I think it works like that. I might be wrong, but check. I'll, you know, it's it's something along those lines. Um, the vehicles usually aren't, you know, they're not overly great. You can actually buy them later uh, with premium currency um, that you have to pay for with real money, uh, but you'll get one for free. And what this includes is basically a bunch of boosters and bonuses for progression through the game and a unique vehicle obviously each nation different nation has its own strengths um and weaknesses from the vehicles that are in it and uh you might want to pick your nation based off that but if you're just interested in a specific nation's history or the vehicles in that um then go off that because that's what most people do that's why most people play this game the third point is uh well we i guess the third thing to do is to pick uh, whether you want to play um, planes or tanks, as you can probably see from, you know, the images and the launcher or whatever. Um, there are both planes and tanks in this. Um, there are also going to be ships. You will be able to play naval combat, but that's not out yet. Um, the game currently features two main types of battle. Those are aero combat and ground forces. As the name suggests, the first involves planes, and the second involves tanks, and you know, other ground vehicles, such as um, anti-air and uh, armored vehicles. Tank battles can also include aircraft, but um, I'll probably I'll probably talk about that a little bit later. You'll already have some starter vehicles when you first start off. They'll be in your little uh, lineup at the bottom, and those are what you get. They're, they're called reserve tier. So you get those to start off with, because obviously you need something to, to play uh, in, in the game. And uh, 
you start with those and then you can unlock as you go through you'll unlock more vehicles you can sort of you can change those out as well once you unlock more um for different vehicles uh this will sometimes however cost uh silver lions which is the non-premium currency which you must pay to train the crew for that specific vehicle or uh, to buy vehicles it, it's also i will say it's worth organizing where you're going to put them uh earlier on rather than later because if you have to retrain crews for more expensive vehicles later down the line um it might screw you over a little bit you can also unlock more crews with lions and later golden eagles which is the premium currency i mentioned earlier i'll also say that uh, at the time of making this naval combat is in closed beta stages so it should be coming shortly hopefully i mean i've been playing this game for a very long time and uh they've always promised it from the start and finally it's like on the horizon um but you know i want them to take their time with it um they did kind of struggle a bit and development choices and they've changed what their idea is and stuff so as long as you know the the end product is as good as the rest of the game then i don't mind how long they take uh choosing a game mode is also important because this is how you're gonna uh get into a battle this is this is how you're gonna basically um choose your difficulty because that's what the game different game modes are you've got your tank battles and you've got your um plane battles but those are split up further into what are essentially difficulties you've got arcade battles realistic battles and simulator um as the name suggests the first mode is is more forgiving it's more arcadey with simplified control surfaces and less hardcore physics um for example vehicles have more health uh, and the modules in each vehicle has more health they behave more responsibly to commands so planes are more likely to turn faster um tanks might uh, just move quicker turrets might turn quicker and this is this is basically just to let you grasp the basics of the vehicle control without it being too restrictive you and, and how the, the rest of the game works um each player also has multiple lives that's something else that's important um lives are based off of your crews so if you have if you start with three vehicles um then you'll have three lives if you put more vehicles in your loadout you'll have more life this mode is ideal for beginners as i said but it does reward less at the end of the battle um, the next step up is realistic battles, which is, there's more to be considered, there's more to think about. Arcade battles tend to be you just sort of mush, mush at each other, um, whereas uh, realistic battles are longer, the maps are bigger, there's more objectives sometimes, and you've really got to think about what you're doing. Uh, and the reason it's called realistic is because it's, the developers tried to make it more historically represent, representate, representative. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, battles last longer, and uh, vehicles perform more realistically, so planes aren't going to turn on a dime. Um, you've got to consider your speed a lot more. Uh, stuff like aircraft destruction. So, in arcade battles, you can't, if you go too fast in a plane, you'll get a warning, and you might suffer some control surface issues, so you won't be able to turn as fast or something. You, nothing really will happen. In realistic battles, you can tear your plane apart in midair. So, you've got to be careful of that. While this is widely considered to be a good thing, this mode is also a lot harder because each player only gets one life. Tankers can use uh, spawn points um, to respawn in battle, but plain players only get one life. Vehicles are much less durable, as I said. Modules will be destroyed, flaps will fly off, wings will tear off. Ammo is limited, which means if you're in a plane, you have to land and rearm and repair. If you're in a tank, you have to drive to a point that you've captured um, to restock. And then the final type of battles are sim battles, which uh, obviously, from the name Simulator, uh, aimed at more like diehard fans uh, with joysticks and advanced knowledge of um, vehicle systems and game mechanics. I wouldn't really recommend this for any new players, just because it's it's not it's less gamey and more it, it tries to be more realistic, so it's much less forgiving. You'll have much less chance to learn how the game actually works. But obviously, there's no harm in going and just giving it a try um, and figuring it out for yourself. However, I'm not really going to go into this mode too much. One, because I don't really play it. I don't really know that much about it. I'm not really in a good position to judge it. But two, I just don't think it's really uh, it's really viable for this this guide, if you will. Oh, and uh, I also forgot to mention, um, I actually had to load up the game to remember the name of this mode. Uh, there are assault battles, um, which are PvE battles um, and use the arcade control system. And they're a great warm-up for a more serious battle. Yeah, uh, no one no one plays this mode. There's also PvE missions in the menu. Uh, these are sometimes fun to play with friends, but they don't reward very high, uh, and they contribute very little towards your progress with the game. And obviously, the final section of the guide, uh, during and after 
bells. Um, funnily enough, I'm only putting one section on this, but this is obviously the main part to the game. Once you're actually in, you'll start to understand how the game works. Um, I'm not supposed to, but I would compare it to games like World of Tanks and World of Warplanes or whatever. Um, in terms of how it, it, it functions, the UIs will look similar, the controls will be similar. But uh, that's more for arcade battles and less for the other modes, especially realistic. Realistic gets rid of the kind of um, reticle for tanks that tells you whether you can penetrate a certain thing. Also, in this game, rather than like disappearing tanks randomly, you'll have a big red box around your enemy. That also disappears in realistic battles, so you have to think about what you're shooting at a lot more. You have to be more self-aware. Main objectives. Uh, for planes, the main objective generally is to wipe out the other team. There are also bombing targets uh, for bombers and ground targets, such as like artillery emplacements to kill. But the game, I've been playing this game for a very long time, and the objectives have never really changed. Usually, nine times out of ten, probably 9.5 times out of ten, uh, what happens is the fighters fight the battle out and bombers are kind of useless. Um, for tanks, however, um, there are, there's, there's multiple ways you can win battles. Um, you can just wipe out the other team, that is often uh, what happens, but there are also capture points which are a lot more important in tank battles. Obviously, holding down a position in a tank is much easier than doing that in a plane. For both game modes, the main way that you would win a uh, battle is by draining the enemy's tickets, uh, and by doing that you can earn points from um, getting kills, uh, point captures, ground targets destroyed, bases damages, bases damages, bases, ba uh, bases damaged, assists, and well, even getting hit. But this is more, well, it's generally aimed at tanks because if you're in a plane, you probably don't want to get hit. After a battle, these points are converted into research points and silver lions. Uh, RP goes towards whatever vehicle you are currently researching uh, and improvements for the tanks and planes that you've earned with them. These can be, th these improvements or modifications as they're called, uh, basically can improve the stats of your vehicle, making it faster, have a higher climb, climb rate, higher, have a, a better turret traverse. But you can also unlock things like different ammo types or bombs or missiles uh, to load out your plane with a, a ground um, an anti-ground, anti-tank loadout, basically. Silver Lions uh, are spent on repairs, which is usually done automatically. It doesn't usually have a massive impact, but can do if you're playing with vehicles that are more expensive. They're used for unlocking, so paying for modifications. Once you've researched something, you generally have to pay for it. And that goes for vehicles and training crews as well. Oop, my phone just went off. Um, if there's anything vital I haven't touched on, I'll probably go into it at a later date. I'm thinking of doing more videos like this just because it's quite a nice format and uh, I think it will help people. Uh, drop me a comment in this video and I'll do my best to answer any questions. Um, I do see all the comments. Like and share this video if you found it useful or if you think someone else will, uh, because it does help um, me. It, it gives me more motivation to do stuff like this. It gives me a reason to because I know people are watching and are enjoying what I'm doing. And it shows that there is an audience of this kind of thing, that there is a reason for me to um, make videos like this and that I am helping people do it and I'll be more likely to do this in the future you know you can always subscribe to the uh, channel I, I have a variety of stuff I tend to do um, not regularly at the moment but I, I would like to do more for example I play a hell of a lot of games and I'll post all kinds of stuff on there War Thunder is quite an easy one to do because it's um, it's it's easy to run it's easy to record it's kind of repetitive so I can do it whenever but there's also games such as Oh, I, I, Skyrim, um, Minecraft, I don't know, I, there's all sorts of things I do. I play guitar, I'm a musician, so I'm likely to put stuff like that up here as well. So if, you ha if you're interested in any of that stuff and you want to support kind of a new YouTuber, um, oh God, YouTuber, whatever, content creator, whatever you want to call it, um, then subscribing, liking my content, sharing it is obviously going to help me. Um, and I can do more stuff for you. Thanks for watching this video, and I really hope it helps you out. Keep an eye out for future stuff. Thank you very much.